Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the kitchen at Mark Kelly Farm. We're going to do a recipe today with some pork that we processed here on the homestead. Uh, my sister Vicki, years ago, used to make what was she called hot meat. And it was basically similar to a chili Colorado that uh, is a little more spicy than normal. And we really loved that stuff, and we loved when she made it. So come on back, stay with us, and we'll show you how to make it. Now my older sister Vicki, I'll give you the backstory. She was my dad's daughter from a previous marriage when my mom and my dad got together. But we never, our family never called anybody stepsister, stepkids, any of that. It was always brother and sister uh, because my mom had uh, two kids from a previous marriage also. So we were all just brothers and sisters. And I'll show you a picture of my sister Vicki. There she is. Now she died in a tragic vehicle accident years ago. And we miss her greatly, but we do have this recipe to remember her by, and every time I make it, it brings back memories of her. So let's get with it. So we start with two pounds of uh, cubed pork, and I just used pork butt from a pig we processed here. Now you're going to want to put some meat tenderizer on this. Uh, you can sprinkle this with a, a teaspoon of Adolph's meat tenderizer per pound, or you can do a tablespoon of vinegar per pound. Uh, that's a natural meat tenderizer as well. You can also use lemon juice. Lemon juice will do that too, or lime juice. Anything acidic will act as a natural meat tenderizer. You want to do that a couple hours before you cook, put it in the fridge. So we've already done that. So now... We're going to add some flour to the mix, but we're going to season the flour with some seasoning, and we'll show you how to make that. So start with a half a cup of flour. You're going to put a half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to mix all this up, and then we're going to toss all of our two pounds of meat in this mixture. Okay, we've got our meat, we've got our flour mixture, and we put a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil in our big kind of saute wok skillet. And we want to uh, fry this in batches. If you put too much of this in the skillet, too much liquid's going to come out and it's going to more like boil instead of fry. So we'll probably do this in about three or four batches. We'll bread them and then we'll throw them right in the skillet. And then we'll add oil as needed as we go. And then once they're cooked with a real nice brown uh, crust on the outside, we're going to put that all in our Dutch oven over here that we're going to actually cook in. We have our last batch in. We did it in four batches, so about a half a pound per batch. You can see we got a nice dark color on it, so we'll continue cooking this so it's nice and brown. And you got to cook this meat on high. The reason you got to cook it on high as that moisture comes out of the meat, you want it to immediately evaporate. You don't want it to sit in the pan. The only liquid you see in that pan is the hot oil. Uh, if you were to overload the pan, say putting all of this meat at once, it would allow that moisture to come out and it wouldn't have time to cook off. So this way we get things nice and brown. It's called the Maillard effect. It caramelizes the outside of that meat and gives you a lot better flavor for the end product. So we'll continue cooking this till it's done. We'll put it in with the rest of the meat and we'll show you where we're going from there. So to our meat that we had in the pot, we added three cups of just regular tap water. And then it calls for two chopped onions. I don't have any fresh onions in the house, so I use onion powder. One tablespoon of onion powder is equal to one onion. So we put two tablespoons of onion powder in there. We're going to bring this to a boil. And then we're going to turn it down on a low simmer, on low. And we're going to let this simmer for 30 minutes before we add the rest of the ingredients. we got a good boil now, so we're going to turn down to low. And we're going to put the lid on it. 
that flour we coated the meat with has got just a little bit of thickening uh, effect to the liquid. Not a lot because we browned it a lot. The more you brown flour, the less it thickens. But it's going to give it just a little bit of thickening. And we're going to simmer that for 30 minutes. And then we'll come back and add the two remaining ingredients. So there's what she looks like after simmering for 30 minutes. You can see it got a lot thicker. And that meat is starting to tenderize and break down. Now, anytime you're cooking something like this, you want to use a heavy bottom pot. If you use just like a stock pot, one of those real lightweight like stainless steel pots, you're going to scorch on the bottom. But you can see right here, we're not scorched on the bottom at all. Because uh, you want to stir it about every five minutes or so while it's simmering so you don't get anything burning on the bottom. So now the next two final ingredients, we're going to add a small can of Ortega chilies. And I like the fire roasted and the hot. You can use the mild or whatever. So we're going to dump that whole can in there. And then we're all going to also going to add a whole can of El Pato Mexican tomato sauce. It's a hotter tomato sauce than what you're used to. And my sister always told me it's the one with the duck on the label. But unfortunately the duck's not on both sides. So this is what it is. Uh, I've seen this in most any store in the Hispanic section. You can buy it there. Now if they don't have it, you can use uh, a regular can of tomato sauce and just maybe spice it up with some uh, some hot sauce, some picante sauce, Tabasco, Tapatio, uh, Frank's hot sauce, whatever you want to use. Probably a couple tablespoons in with that. So those are our last two ingredients. So we're going to incorporate this together. Now this is going to simmer until those pieces of pork become nice and tender. So I don't know exactly how long that's going to take. Usually it takes about another hour or so. And if you don't want to sit and babysit this on the stove and come stir it very often, you can put the lid on it as long as the, the container is oven safe. Put it in your oven at 250 and just let it cook slowly like that and just check on it every hour or so until the meat is the consistency that you want. It should be like fork tender. Uh, right before it starts falling apart. You don't want it to fall apart. I like to keep the chunks in the meat. But that's what she looks like right there. Beautiful. Can't wait to dig into that. If you don't have the Ortega chilies, you can get creative with the peppers like this. It's some jalapenos that I canned last year. It's just uh, jalapenos pickled. Um, we did a video on this, I believe, when we did our cowboy candy. So if you're interested in uh, canning your jalapenos, we ground those up so they're like a relish consistency. Uh, they're a lot easier to use than like the rings that most people make. But if you look for like our cowboy candy recipe or jalapenos or something like that in our canning playlist, you'll find that. Along with our cowboy candy, that's fantastic. Now, if you don't like the hot food... Uh, you can tone this down quite a bit, like use the diced green chilies that are mild and um, just use like a regular tomato sauce without the hot sauce in it. But you can spice it as hot or as low as you want. I like the heat, so I put the hot green chilies in there, obviously. Now Kelly, she won't touch this stuff. It's going to be way too hot for her. So we're going to show you a variation of this that I'm making for Kelly tonight simultaneously. So we'll give you a bonus recipe. We're making Kelly some pork chili verde. Um, the process is exactly the same up to dumping the last two ingredients in. So this needs to simmer for 30 minutes. And then I'll show you what ingredients go into this. All right, our first 30 minutes is done on Kelly's dinner, her chili verde. And the first thing we're going to add is some of our sweet bell peppers from the garden last year. Because remember, we're going to make this a little milder. 
Uh, if you wanted to make it just the same, you could add the Ortega chilies, the jalapenos, whatever chilies or peppers you want to add in here. It's fine. Now these sweet peppers, if you don't get to all your sweet peppers in the garden, do what we did. Kelly just chopped them and put them in bags, put them in the freezer. And then when we need them, we just hack off of this little frozen bunch, whatever we want. And use them in our soups and stews or whatever. It makes it real convenient. The texture doesn't matter because they're cooking down anyway. If you're a gardener, you know when you grow tomatoes in the fall, when the, the temperatures start cooling down, your tomatoes will stop turning red and they just stay green. Well, you can use those green tomatoes to make like a, ta a green taco sauce, similar to what you would use tomatillos for, almost, you know, replace them with it. So I'll give you that recipe right now if you want to make those. Uh, we'll make that in the fall and we'll actually do a video on it. But here's the recipe. So here's the written recipe. It's easier if you just pause your video and write it down. But we'll go through it. Get your 28 ounces of green tomatoes. Uh, make sure you core them and then cut them up. Uh, one medium onion or one tablespoon of onion powder. I recommend the, the fresh onion if you got it. Two tablespoons olive oil. One teaspoon of sugar, half a cup of white vinegar, one teaspoon of salt, two green bell peppers uh, diced up, uh, one whole jalapeno with or without seeds. It depends on if you want the more heat or less heat. Or you could use one habanero if you have it and you want it to make it a little bit hotter. Now you put all this in a pan and you cook it down until everything is a nice consistency. Cook a little bit of the moisture out and you can can it like we did. Just uh, find a recipe for taco sauce or something similar and put your hot mixture in a hot uh, sterilized jar and figure out how long to can it. I think we did it like 15 minutes for the pint. But uh, check your canning books for the, the pressure time on that. Because it's got vinegar in it, you can water bath it. You don't have to pressure can it. So we're going to dump this in our mix. And I'm going to use a cup of it. And remember, a pint's two cups. So we're going to dump half of this jar in the mix. And that's right at half of the jar. And we'll stir all that to combine. And then we're going to simmer this again. Now, uh, the hot meat that we made of my sister's, uh, that's been simmering for about 45 minutes, and it's pretty much done. I've got it in the oven just staying warm for dinner. Kelly will be home here in about 45 minutes. And then this one will be just about done when Kelly gets home. Now, if you don't make your own taco sauce, you could get by with something like this or like a green salsa in a jar. I think La Victoria makes the green salsa as well. You could use that interchangeably, interchangeably, most likely. Now, this is a lot tangier than our homemade stuff. So you would probably want to start with maybe half a cup and taste it and see if you want to add more. Now, doesn't that look fantastic? It smells fantastic. So this is going to thicken some more as it simmers over the next 45 minutes or so. If you don't want the red or the yellow in there, just use the green peppers. Uh, but we don't mind the extra color in there. Alrighty. Now my favorite way to eat this stuff is on a, a warm, soft flour tortilla. You just can't beat it. Maybe with a little cheese or something like that. Fantastic. Now you can also serve this over rice or something like that would be really good. Uh, for breakfast in the morning, you could cook some potatoes and maybe some onions and pour this over the top with a couple over easy eggs on top and have like a huevos rancheros. That would be really good. So, sky's the limit, folks. Now, if you find this is a little warm for your taste, add some sour cream, which is really good with this, or some cheese, which is also dairy, will bring the heat down a little bit uh, if you just find that it's too hot. The other thing you want to do when it's almost done, you want to check it for salt. Check it for seasoning. If it needs a little more salt, add a little more salt to your taste. Now, how about that, folks? Two bonus recipes in one video. So, three all together. So, every time I make this, it brings me right back, sitting in my sister's kitchen whenever we would visit her. 
She lived about an hour away from us, a little further south there in California. I remember sitting in her kitchen because it was always our request for her to make the hot meat and she'd be in the kitchen making that and we'd all be in the kitchen visiting. So, sis, I hope uh, all is well with you up in heaven. Uh, I hope you don't mind me adapting your recipe for Kelly. Uh, I wish you could have met her. You would have loved her. Free spirit and real independent just like you. You guys would have hit it off real well. So, till next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Give these recipes a shot. Um, we'll catch you later. Love you.